Now this morning we have a really, really busy lesson. It's quite a quick lesson. So I'm going to show you a little example of what we're going to do and then I'm going uh, to let you get on straight away. Can I just have a hand up? Who's this one? Let me see. Oh, that one, that's yours. Okay, so you should be sat with the person that you were working with on your piece last week. Or if you're working on your own, you should have your own one in front. Where's yours, you two? Is this one it? Is that one yours? No? Yeah? Right. Okay, so this morning we are going to be looking... Elia, thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. We are going to be looking at painting the base colours on top of our picture. Now, can anyone tell me, what is a base colour? What do I mean by a base colour? Yes? Not quite, Shaney. Is it where you paint over and then afterwards you paint over again? Yes, so what is that called? Zainab. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. It's the background, okay? It's the background colours. That's what we're working on today. So, on your big sheet, you will have lots of different patterns. You've got all your, your design on here. Before you can go and paint, you don't want to spend ages and ages painting in all of these circles if then you're going to have to paint around really, really carefully. But the base coat is basically filling it out and getting all the colours, a flat colour to go in the background first of all, and then you can add all the tiny little details in there after, okay? I just want you to look at the board for a second. I've done an example of the kind of thing that I want you to do today. So. In, on your table, there is a palette. There's a selection of different colours. These are different kinds of blues. We've got yellow, we've got green, and we've got black and white, which are your neutral colours as well. Now, what I want you to do is use these colours. I don't want you just to use the colours straight out of the palette. I want you to use these three sections here to mix the different kinds of blues, OK? Now, we're looking at the theme of water, so you need to be thinking about watercolours. I don't want you to just use yellow straight onto your, onto your background. I want you to mix, use the yellow to mix different shades of green, different shades of blues, that kind of thing. The black and white, that is, there, that is there to be, especially the black, as a minimal thing, just to darken any little bits that you want. Don't use really dark blues today, because it's the background colour. Why is it important that we don't use really all really dark colours today. Yes, Andrew. Yeah, you might you might cover up your pencil drawing, which is okay, but what you'll notice is when you paint with your base colour, you you should be able to see the pencil through. So where you come to do the detail on later, you'll be able to see that and it'll be easy. But it's not just that, there's another reason. Why why else can you not just use the dark colours today? Does anyone know? Have a guess. Yes. Yeah, kind of. What it is, is that if you start using just dark blues all over this straight away, it's going to be quite hard to lighten those later. So say if you had a section which had a big bit of pattern on it, and you painted that a really dark blue, if you wanted to add kind of white or yellow or anything into on top of that, those lighter colours don't come th as through as strong as you'd like. Okay? Now I'm just going to show you a quick example of the kind of thing that I want you to do. So, in your water pots, you've got a selection of brushes. I want you to think about really, really carefully about the kind of brush, the kind of brush that you're going to use. So, if you're doing a big block like this, you're not going to use a tiny, tiny little brush. How do we hold a paintbrush before we start? How do we hold a paintbrush? Yes, Ishmael. Like a pencil. Like a pencil. Do we hold it at the end here and paint like that? Where do we hold it? Yeah. We hold it right down here on the silver part and we paint in the same direction really, really gradually. So I'm going to show you. So here we've got some colours. I'm going to mix a bit of colours. I'm going to add some white to this. If you use white with your paint, first of all, you get really, really, it makes the paint look a little thicker. So Often, when you're doing your base colour, mix a little bit of white with all your colours and see what you get. So, 
Can you see it comes out really nice and thick like that? You don't need too much water with this. And if you notice, I'm painting in the shape of the, the weird shape that I've, I've drawn. So I'm painting round like that. I'm not just going like that. And if you notice that it gets really, really dry like that, you can just add a little bit of water to it and just stretch it out over the page. Can you see that action that I'm doing there? And I'm holding the paintbrush right at the, on the top of the silver section. Okay? So what the other tip that I wanted to give you before I let you start, you need to think about the way that you're sitting, the way that you're holding your paintbrush. If you're slouching over like that, or you're kind of turning on your side, you're not going to get the best, the best effect when you're painting. You need to think about the way that... It's as if you're doing your handwriting, okay? Doesn't matter as well if you go over some of these edges. Can you see that? Like that's quite even and that's quite rough. So you need to just try and paint in one direction and just little bits gradually like that until it's quite smooth. And if you get, you can just add a little tiny bit more water to it like that, and that will just stretch the paint a little bit further. This is nice. Okay. I might share somebody's work. Right. Five, four, three, two. Everyone, pen temperatures down. Voices off. One. Okay, I just want to share this one with the class because even though we're not doing the details just yet and you've started doing some of the details, I like, I really like the way that you've blocked out some of these main sections of colour. You're not worrying too much about all these little tiny bits, you're just getting the colour down. That is what is important today. Getting the base colours, getting those big blocks of colour down, not worrying. I've had children saying that they're worried that they're going out of the lines. Don't worry about that. All of that stuff will come as you start to add your details in. You can define the edges with a small brush later. Just block out the main sections of colour today. Okay, well done. That's, that's really good. Carry on. Joseph, make sure that when you take your brush out, you wipe it on the edge of your pot first, okay? Have a look. You need more water, a little bit. A little. Before we go down to assembly, I just wanted to run a few things, just kind of give a bit of guidance of what we're going to be doing next week. Can anyone, first of all, just tell me, did anyone mix, did anyone find anything tricky about today's lesson? Did anyone find anything tricky? Yeah. Getting into the line. So what do you think you are going to, how are you going to do it differently next week? Use the edge of your paintbrush. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice idea. Adele? Head in? Oh, your hand wasn't up. Okay. The details. So next week, I think, I've noticed that a lot of children, even though we did go over a few times about the fact we're doing the base colours, we're still focusing on the details today. We really need to get that background covered before you do any of the details. So next week we need to finish that and then, then after that we will start adding in, we're going to be using little bits of pencil crayon, we're going to be using fine brushes, we might even add a little bit of watercolour painting on top of this just to bring out those tiny fine details and patterns and things like that. Okay, well done to, for today, it was a really, really good lesson. You've, they're look, they're gonna, these are really going to be gorgeous, I'm excited.